Welcome to Pix Insight for Beginners. The image you can see here in front of you was produced in part one, where we learned how to do this in under 10 minutes using just four basic processes. Today, we're going to look at just one of those processes and refine it so that we can produce a better base image. My hope is that Pix Insight for Beginners will give you a good basic workflow to produce an image that you should be happy with, but is also a really strong foundation that you can further build on with some more advanced techniques. If that interests you, please stick around to watch the series and consider subscribing and hitting the like button. So here we are inside Pix Insight, and you'll notice there's a heap already open and that's because this is where we got to in Pix Insight for Beginners Part 1. In under 10 minutes, we created this image, which I'd be happy to put on my Facebook or Instagram to show my family and friends. A reminder of how we got there really quickly. Here is our integration, our TIFF file straight out of Deep Sky Stacker. The first thing we did was apply the screen transfer function to stretch the image in memory so that we can see what it looks like. It's not actually permanently stretched at this point. We noticed the green background from light pollution, so we used Automatic Background Extractor to get rid of that background and produce a new image where all that green was gone. We screen transfer function that so we could see it and it looks already like a really nice image. We then used Dynamic Crop to crop out all the nasty artifacts around the edge of our image and then finally we applied the screen transfer function to the histogram transformation to make our stretch permanent. We then had to turn off the screen transfer function so that we could see it. We saved this as a JPEG file and we were done. Today we're going to start with this image but we're not going to apply the screen transfer function we're going to use histogram transformation manually. So if you're following along, we need to undo that histogram transformation we just did. So if I click on the image, see how it's blue, that means it's active. I just need to press the undo button here. Okay, and then I'm back to my unstretched image. I also need to reset my histogram transformation so that we're ready to go. Okay. Now histogram transformation is basically like levels and curves in Photoshop combined, but it's a little bit more visual, a little bit more um, advanced than that. It's made up of three sections, the top section, the middle section, and the bottom section. The top and the middle section are going to show us a visual picture of what the histogram looks like for our image. And we have sliders just like in levels to adjust the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And it's this middle image that's our, that we're going to be working on. That's going to show our current histogram. And then the top is going to show what the histogram is going to change to. To be able to show the histogram, I need to click on this tick button here called Track View. And you can see straight away there, there is our histogram showing now for this image. At the moment, our current view and our updated view are identical because we haven't actually done anything. So just like in levels on Photoshop, I'm going to move this mid-tone slider towards the right-hand edge of my histogram. But as I said, this, is a, this tool is a little bit more powerful than even in Photoshop. I can see a real-time view of what, what's going to happen before I actually do it. So this real-time preview here, if I click on the circle, it's going to show me a copy of my image and it's going to show me visually what's happening. So I'm going to be able to see what happens to the histogram, but also what happens to my image. So I'm going to drag that mid-tone slider just to the bottom right of my histogram. And you can see the image is getting brighter and I can start to see the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula. And I just press the square button to apply that. Okay. The reason that the preview has just gone white is because my midtone slide is still in the same spot that I just had it. So it's kind of super stretched my image now. I need to reset back to default. 
So now my mid-tone slide is back in the middle where it should be. And I can do my second stretch. Again, I'm going to move that mid-tone slider just to the base of my histogram. And now I can start to move my shadow slider because I've got more room on the left now. See how the histogram's way over here in the, the almost towards the middle? I've got all this room now on the flat, and flat part here to move the shadow slider. And you'll see the image gets darker and darker. Okay, and I can keep going and going and going. I don't want to go too far because if I get to say here where I'm actually inside the histogram, you can see at the top here, it's showing me I've clipped my histogram. The left side of the histogram is completely gone now. Okay, and I can also get a numerical sense that that's happening right here. This is showing me how many pixels just got turned to black. We lost all the information in those pixels. And that's a lot of pixels. So I can see visually when I've clipped my histogram. I can see in my picture when it looks too dark here in the preview. And I also get a numerical sense of what's happening as well. So three, three different spots I can look to make sure I don't push that slider too far. So I like to move it until that number there is just still zero. About there. Okay, and that's going to be my second stretch. I'm going to reset again, and I'll, I'll do one more stretch. And I think that'll probably be enough. So again, I'm going to move this slider just to the base of the histogram here. And then I'm going to adjust. This time, I don't mind if I clip just a little bit. A couple of pixels here, a couple of hundred pixels even is probably not so bad. But I don't want to go too far. I want to get my image. See? The background's too black for me. I like my background to still be a bit gray. So I'm going to move it along, maybe about there. See, I don't want it too bright. And I don't want it too black. So I might move it to, what, what was it, about 10. So I've clipped 10 pixels in the whole image to black. That's not disastrous. And that looks quite nice to me. So I'll press the square button. And that's my image now stretched. So I can close that preview. And here it is. Now this part of the video you don't have to do, but I want to do it for illustrative purpose, purposes. Okay, so I am going to minimize these. I can just press these little arrow button things here and they just minimize these things so they're not taking up so much space on my screen. I'm just going to move them out the way. Okay, I've still got them open because we're going to use them in the third video, but I've got them out the way. So this image we've just created, I'm going to pop here. And then I'm going to open up, and then, then I'm going to open up that original image we created in the first video. Okay, and you can see it looks a lot brighter than our image at the moment. Okay, but what I want to show you is, uh, and I'm going to zoom in on it, so I can use my uh, zoom in, zoom out buttons here. I'm going to zoom in on my image here, and then I'm going to move just by using these little sliders to this point here in my image. And the reason I've done that is because we can see some bright nebula here, but we can also see the transition to the background. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here on this image. I'm going to zoom in and then move my sliders till I'm roughly in the same position again that I, that I am in, in this image. That's pretty close. Okay, and the reason I've just done this, I want to show you the difference. So with the STF function, the very first image we created, the nebula itself, the bright bits, look quite nice. But the transition from the bright nebula to the dark background, we can see there's a lot of noise there. Whereas in this image that we just created, the nebula looks very clean. There's not much noise. And the transition to the dark background is not terrible either. There's not a huge amount of noise that we can see there. That's the point of the STF though. The whole point of it is to brighten our image right up so that we can see everything, including the noise, okay? But it's at the expense of contrast. The contrast in this image is nowhere near the contrast in the image we just stretched, okay? So by taking a little bit more time with the histogram transformation, we can produce a much better base image that we can work further on. All right, so that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you found that informative and could follow along nice and easily. 
Again, there should be a link showing on the bottom of the screen now that will take you to the next video on processing icons so that we can start building up a repeatable workflow. Thanks for watching.